Hello, ballers, and welcome to the only front player guide you'll ever need for the upcoming 2022 paintball season. My name is Steven, and in this video, we'll be discussing the principles of the front player position, or commonly referred to as the number one, as well as break down what you should be doing during the early, mid, and late game to maximize your effectiveness on the field. If you enjoy this type of content, be sure to check out our other paintball guides where we dive deep into how pro players think and process the game of paintball. Lastly, be sure to check out our Discord community where we discuss all things paintball and get into heated discussions on whether or not three brands of root beer should be in S tier on a tier list. Like what? Let's get started. Perhaps unlike any other position, the effectiveness of the number one can make or break a team's success, especially on Tournament Sunday when they're likely to be more gassed than anyone else. We won't cover ways in which you can condition as the number one in this video, but suffice it to say that your conditioning is a contributing factor to your success at this and any other position on the field, and that much of the fatigue of paintball can be avoided by exercising proper fundamentals. For videos on proper paintball fundamentals, be sure to check out our TikTok in the description below. With that out of the way, let's talk about some characteristics of the number one. As the number one, you are typically the smallest and fastest among you, the furthest and widest of the field, supporting your team by applying pressure through your survival and reconnaissance, and often acting as the linchpin against any dug-in opponent, as your decision making can either collapse or break open a point. Some principles of the number one are that you must have a job and know your job before you step onto the field. Listen to your teammates, communicate what you need, and react appropriately to what's going on, and do all within your power to move up the field and apply pressure on your opponents or relieve pressure for your teammates. The early mid and late game can be broken up into three distinct parts, with each part being contingent on how in control you are in any particular point. Keep in mind that when we talk about these distinct parts, they're all happening within seconds of each other. The higher up the divisional ranks you go, the faster your decision making will need to be. In the early game, as the number one, the first thing you need to do is read what your opponents are doing at the start box and take the safest route to your primary bunker. In some cases, you'll need to deviate or option out of your original game plan if it means you'll survive the breakout. What you're primarily concerned with here is maximizing the likelihood of your survival while also not sacrificing the game plan your coach has set out for you or your team. In some cases, it'll be more worth it to risk your body by running through an opponent's lane if it means that when you survive, your chances of winning the point dramatically increase than it would be to over-prioritize your survival at the cost of putting your team in a bad position. In that case, your bad positioning has lost you the point already. Once you hopefully have survived the breakout, you next need to assess the pressure coming your way and work to move up the field as far and as fast as possible. The best way to assess what pressure is coming your way is to first keep your eyes downfield when you run to your bunker, including off the break. Once in your bunker, you need to confirm how many guns are looking or shooting at you by head checking where you're not getting shot from. Learning how to safely head check and verify where paint is coming from is a core skill in paintball that can be developed or improved through deliberate effort, either through the Fedorov drill or repetition behind a bunker. After you've identified where the paint is coming from, decide whether you can safely dodge this paint, either by running around or underneath it, or if you need a teammate's help in putting the people in who are stopping you from moving up the field. You should be able to make some kind of secondary move by this point. Also, as a side note, it's easier to communicate to your teammates only when your progression of the field has been stopped, as this serves as a natural reminder for most of us, but it's far better to relay this information in real time as you're processing and working to move up the field, as this is the speed at which top level players play at. Once your progression of the field has been halted, hopefully only after you've made your secondary move, you have entered the mid game. In the mid game as a number one, you first need to assess the situation, identify what the kill count is, how many teammates you have alive, who saw you make your move, and then sync up with your remaining teammates. The easiest way to sync up with your teammates is to start a conversation with the guy closest to you. If there's no one close to you, shout someone's name and wait till you get a response. <laughs> Once you get a response, work together to either move up the field quickly or halt your opponent's progression. Knowing whether to risk your body to move up the field or play safe and halt your opponent's progression depends on quite a few factors that will be covered in a later video. For now, suffice it to say that this is one of the most complicated decision-making trees in all of paintball. It deserves its own video. After you've determined what to do, you have entered the late game. But before we enter the late game, let's summarize the mid game. The entire point of the mid game is to assess the damage and gain control of the field. Once the chaos of the point has stopped, which is only accomplished by knowing your kill count, how many teammates you have alive, and where the remaining players are, you've entered the late game. In some cases, you can keep the chaos going long enough that you never enter the mid game and instead go straight to the late game. This can be accomplished by quickly blowing out one side and running down the field, or by making moves that your opponents don't see, so as to prevent them from gaining the intel they need to move into the late game. This is why, as a front player, it's very, very important to know whether or not someone saw you make your move up the field. You should always assume that if you saw someone, they 
they saw you, unless their back was to you while you made your move. There are other instances in which your opponents can know where you are without either of you seeing each other. For more on that, be sure to check out my guides linked in the card above. All right, now that we've covered that, you've now entered the late game, and it's time to close out the point. Closing out points successfully is the culmination of the accuracy of your intelligence gathering and the quality of your decision making. In the late game, as the number one, you're primarily trying to identify the threats that are preventing you from moving up the field and work with your teammates to eliminate them. Eliminating threats can be accomplished by either snapping them out, putting them in and moving up the field, or by running them down. Another option is to wait for your opponents to make a mistake, either by setting up a trap or punishing their mechanical, positional, or game plan mistakes mistakes. Keep in mind that punishing your opponent's mechanical or positional mistakes becomes less reliable the higher up the divisional ranks you go. Setting up traps or countering your opponent's game plan, however, is a core skill exercised in high-level paintball. The safest way to close out a point is to put someone in, move up the field, and then shoot those that are across the field from you. As Rusty Glaze puts it, you're looking for necks, packs, and backs. If your opponent is super dug in, you might need to risk your body to blow up on the point, as is often the responsibility of the number one. In any case, determine what you should do with the coordination of your teammates and execute. If you survive whatever it is you decide to do, be sure to relay that information you've gathered while you rapidly work to close out the point. Congratulations. Congratulations! You've now successfully won a point for your team by effectively playing the number one. Remember that the ball is not always in your court, meaning that you aren't always the one to win the point for your team, especially depending on the strong and weak sides of any given field. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss when we drop our next guide. Also, don't forget to check out our Discord server in the description below where you can discuss paintball further or play video games with like-minded individuals. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video, but until then, stay safe and have a good one.